Hey guys, this is Feeding Frenzy 91, and I'm talking about rides, right? Yeah, I know this is a gaming channel, but why am I talking about rides? Well, at Fun Spot, which is in Orlando, there's I think two fun spots around the Orlando area, right? And at one of the fun spots, they have a roller coaster where you can ride with a VR headset on. Now, that really adds to the experience. Let me just say, at one point, I was like, nope, I'm not going on this roller coaster without that VR headset, basically. Me and my brother-in-law were just waiting in line for the VR headset seats on that roller coaster. So there's supposed to be a Spider-Man ride opening up on June 4th where you can actually shoot webs, I'm assuming at like VR targets, just by moving your hands. It may not be VR, it may be one of those where you just have a big screen in front of you and it can detect your hand movement, I don't know. But in any case, you can only shoot one web at a time, right? But to unlock multiple webs, you have to buy a power band. Yes, a power band. And how much does this power band cost? Well, $35. Yep, that's right. After you done spend your money to get to the theme park and everything, to enhance the experience, you can pay $35 for this power band, right? Now, that's not it. Apparently, what GameSpot is calling web tech, you have to pay, which adds to the power band. Like, apparently, with the Spider-Man and the Ghost Spider web tech ad, they allow you to shoot electrodynamic web slinging actions, right? And with the Iron Man and the Rescue ad, they allow you to shoot Repulsor Ray Blast. Okay, so these give you new experiences on the ride. Now, apparently the Iron Man ones also can be used outside the park, but the Spider-Man ones can't. But here's the thing, like, this wasn't explained in the articles I read. Like, to get the full experience, would you have to get all four? Or would you have to at least get two, like the both the Iron Man version and the Spider-Man version? I don't know, but let's just stick with the $65 that you'd have to pay JCD for one of these versions, right? So for the most part, even though like the Iron Man ones apparently can be used at home, they can blow out air and stuff, you basically want me to pay 65 bucks to enhance one ride in the park. Because apparently Disney was arguing that, well, Harry Potter at, I guess, Universal does the same thing where that you can buy a wand that enhances your experience. But then some people were like, but that enhances the experience of the entire, I'm, I'm guessing, Harry Potter area not just the one ride. So you want people to pay like 65 bucks to enhance the experience of the one ride. And the question is, is, th is that where it's like the true experience? Like without that, are you gonna feel really left out in the ride? And here's the thing, this may be where theme parks are headed because apparently Nintendo Land does a similar thing with power bands, but even that sounds like it's gonna be used around the whole park as opposed to just one ride. I don't know about this. To me, it's not worth it if it's just mostly, even with the Iron Man ones, for the most part, just going to be used in one ride. Yeah, they kind of look cool. Maybe there's something that you just like to have. Maybe people who like to collect these type of things like to have. But what do you guys think about this? And do you guys think that this is where we're really headed with these theme parks and stuff? Where like a good amount of theme parks are going to start charging for things that enhance the ride's experience? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. And may God bless you all.